artificial creating something artificially is not easy okay so it is kind of giving you know this is possible from human being okay? it's the ability of humans to replicate thoughts okay and of course uh, artificial less is a very very uh, complex phenomena basically it has lot of uh, you know products uh, which are quite useful to society today uh, in my photographs you can see that the first picture is about art artificial skin uh, the, the researchers have developed artificial skin basically that is to help the uh, the victims the burnt victims emerge from the situation and uh, if you see a pro photograph followed with the third photograph is an artificial voice box uh, which is created uh, by dr vishal of bangalore and uh, you know you, you may wonder <coughs> this particular device is just for 50 rupees and uh, this instrument is used for the people suffering from throat cancer who lost their voice because of throat cancer this is the device which uh, gets the you know voice back to the the, and the, the field of medicine uh, heavily depends upon artificialness today okay even to the extent of you take drugs for your you know ailments uh, the art functioning hypertension diabetic conditions you know all these things uh, even under the your body is even though it's natural it can come under artificialness once you start injecting the drugs into the body so artificialness is very very well you know now we are supposed to move on to into human we are proud of we are intelligent intelligent beings uh, living on in the on the earth so you you how do you really test uh, you are intelligent there are many ways of testing it uh, a simple uh, you know children game like you know find out the difference between it. this this calls for intelligence in terms of you know visualization you try to find out the differences okay so Uh, you can see this particular picture i don't go into the exercise this has about seven differences if you just watch very closely then uh, completing the series okay then uh, completing the solving the jumble like this okay so uh, then uh, creating the word out of the letters well, these are all your small small exercises you can uh, put yourself in under the test and you can uh, prove that or you can show that you are intelligent so human intelligence is uh, having different characteristic it is not only good in identifying the patterns or solving the series or you know uh, pattern matching and uh, arrangement puzzle solving and all other than that it also has something called a pareidolia pareidolia if you look into any patterns you can try to relate it with the known mapping uh, for example in the hand side you see the uh, coffee cup you can directly map it to a human face okay and automatically your brain does that without you saying it okay? that is also a capability of a human brain so if you look into this picture an upside down picture okay uh, in the very first look you will not notice any difference suppose if i rotate this picture you can see that this is called the thatcher effect uh, basically it is a flaw in the human brain so, you know human brain is good things as well as it is also not good in you know few things okay it will not identify so easily the features okay but it also it could do that and if you look into this picture uh, this is the picture of the photograph of a person uh, the emotion is expressing is a fear uh, without saying you can understand that this this expression is out of the features of the you know, raised eyebrows raised the eyelids Uh, tense lower you your brain works very beautifully and finds out you know that particular emotion by just looking at the photograph so all these are the intelligence okay, which comes over the age and over the time over experience and all right what is basically a human intelligence it's a a human intelligence is a mental quality which consists of the ability to learn from experience adapt to the situations understand and handle abstract concepts and use knowledge to manipulate one's environment okay that is the standard definition of human intelligence and of course uh, human intelligence could be of uh, practical type it could be of creative type or it could be of analytical type normally human intelligence is measured using iq okay so intelligent quotient and you know there are some various scales for measuring the human uh, iq uh, anything above 140 is called as a nearly uh, a genius Uh, exceptionally genius 120 to 140 is very super intelligence 
110 to 190 superior intelligence 90 to 109 is normal average intelligence this is the iq thing as given by professor william stone so india ranking is about 121 with an average iq of 82 so the beauty of human intelligence is we have that power of imagination creativity so uh, this is all you know motivation factors for us to go towards something called as artificial intelligence so artificial intelligence is an outcome someone so industry is trying to make some kind of you know models to mimic the human intelligence okay so how do you how do you say you are intelligent it's not like you have big, a bigger iq therefore uh, you consider you are intelligent it's not like that iq is one of the measurable factors but there are other ways you can uh, say you are intelligent for example you are curious about the world you are observant you are self controlled okay you recognize your limits all these are intelligent features only so a system or a machine which will kind of mimic any of these features okay any of these features could you know uh, can be qualified as a intelligent machine possible so with this background you know there is something called human intelligence and uh, we are supposed to move towards artificial intelligence okay artificial intelligence is according to stephen hawking uh, he has given a statement uh, uh, that if ai okay would take off on its own okay and redesign itself at an ever increasing rate humans who are limited by slow biological evolution couldn't compete with that so it is a, this is a lot of chance for artificial intelligence to take over human intelligence but that's not in near future as of now we are living in the intelligence in another 20 another 10 15 years time we will be going on to general intelligence then after that we will be going on uh, you know superior intelligence levels Okay, still a long way to go to achieve that level of intelligence where you know ai will take over human intelligence i'll give you some facts about that so per se artificial intelligence is what it is a simulation of human intelligence processes by machines especially computer systems okay we are going to make use of computer system to create the feeling of human intelligence okay and uh, it is it really depends upon the algorithms okay we are going to make use of a lot of algorithms to create the art system so this is a long way to long history behind the uh, artificial intelligence uh, creation right from uh, thomas bayes you know popular bayes theorem uh, it in 1763 bayes has created a reasoning framework uh, which is still viable still it is used very popularly in industry called bayesian networks and bayesian uh, uh, you know formula and all you might be knowing that it's a probabilistic formula in 1854 george gol has created the logical reasoning system in 1921, uh, Zeck writer Carol Catholic, he has used the word called robot in his play. And in 1940, McCulloch and has created the artificial neurons to mimic the uh, human, the, the cell of a human brain. It's called artificial neuron or neural network. In 1950, Alan Turing, uh, who is considered the father of uh, modern computer science, has created the imitation game called the Turing test. But actually, in 1955, uh, John McCarthy and his team have coined the term called AI. So AI, uh, roughly in 1955, this word artificial intelligence started becoming popular. 2021, you imagine how, how much of effort has gone into this particular science. But with all these efforts of over, you know, 70, 80 years, what is the level of, uh, you know, the, the the standards or what is the level of intelligence the machine has reached? Is still a question mark. Okay. So, coming to the highest IQ uh, as of now in the industry is having an IQ of 47.28. This is much below than a six-year-old human IQ, which is 55.5. That means the the, the best high, the best AI system available in the world today is having an IQ less than six-year-old boy or a human, 5.5. Okay, so uh, that's what I told you. Still a long way to go for achieving an IQ. This is a bit a uh, old figure 2016 iq scores you may think uh, another 10 another 10 may be added now and of course this is going to kind of make some uh, revolution due, due to quantum computing is coming up if you look at the Siri, Siri is a uh, it is 23.94 uh, maybe if you add plus 10 it is 23 if you look into bing is uh, better baidu is doing better okay uh, so a lot of industry you know then you know a lot of money to create a system 
which uh, which is uh, having an highest rank you of course there are many companies which are working on uh, ai as of now smart ai companies like baidu tesla alphabet nvidia analytic facebook microsoft everyone they have their own products um, they they are trying to push lot of ai into their products so that the product can be can be qualified as a you know uh, the smart product especially if you look into alphabet the google is a subsidiary of alphabet where uh, there are lot of the search uh, the entire search engine is uh, enabled with a lot of ai uh, things today uh, especially if you look into the you know uh, commerce site also i I'll, I'll come to that point later but lot of these companies you know uh, trying to push uh, ai into their products so that they can want they want to achieve the ai supremacy so coming to the uh, my second point is the problems and problem spaces so whatever you imagine today uh, whatever the problem space you looking look today everything is possible with can be converted to an ai problem so to convert any given problem to an ai problem we have some methodology okay i I'll, i'll be talking some few minutes on that methodology so coming to the problem if you take any problem problem should have some goals this is very minimum requirement whether the problem belongs to commerce problem belongs to finance problem belongs to any commerce or problem belongs to something like agriculture it belongs to healthcare uh, whatever it is buying selling any problem if you take it uh, it should have some goal first okay you should have a clarity on what is the problem and what is its goal and once the problem is defined there would be some set of objects inside the problem okay first of all your job is to identify what are the objects or the actors in the problem space okay they'll be interacting with each other to uh, make some transaction happen or make some small transaction happen and third thing is what are the operations possible or valid operations in that because any you, you cannot allow ai to do operations on its own again it's under the control of human so if you are defining some operations for your ai solution then of course uh, your ai is still you know try to uh, you know obey your orders but what is the uh, the beauty of ai system is it evolves slowly in the sense it learns slowly after some experience it keep learning on its own and try to make its own set of objects i try to make its own set of relationships and make some associations so that uh, it can keep you know improvising on its knowledge that is the ai part that means intelligence you are going to inject the intelligence in the ai system to some extent afterwards you allow the ai system to evolve on its own that's why we have variety of machine learning today called as supervised model and supervised model reinforcement model okay there are many techniques available where you are controlling the complete learning by you as a master that is under supervised learning non supervised learning you are making a model to learn on its own without any control and reinforcement learning you are making the system to learn by uh, by giving some kind of rewards it is basically reward based learning like the uh, announcers were telling if you participate in five of the events they are conducting you will be getting a certificate as a reward actually that is what are uh, rewarding your participation like that you de- you develop the ai system uh, that is going to be rewarded on proper participation and punished if the participation is not correct okay that is the reinforcement learning model there are a lot of you know applications are coming up in reinforcement learning exception uh, uh, especially the game industry gaming industry is using a lot of reinforcement learning and then automotive sectors are using reinforcement learning if you take autonomous autonomous cars today the, it is a combination of all models of learning it has a supervised learning it uses non supervised learning it has reinforcement learning so ai is uh, occupying slowly all uh, entire space especially the automotive sector is doing a lot, lot good in ai of course uh, 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 let me finish by giving this five steps formal description of problem space the first thing is in any ai system just to uh, give you an idea in ai system any ai problem space we 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 consider the state space that is very important to know in ai problem is nothing but collection of states okay for example to make you understand uh, uh, let's take a quiz uh, sorry chess board uh, the, the you know the state space is 8 cross 8 chess board what is the number of 
possible config configuration for the 8 class hs4 is 4 followed by 426165368 possible number of combinations possible in the sense i want to arrange eight screens on my eight class hs board so many number of combinations i can try out this is called as a state space but all these combinations are not valid combinations because every combination will be qualified for whether it's a valid combination or not for example if you are arranging a rubik cube if you just rotate the rubik cube it is not a final state it is one of the state of the rubik cube if the colors have been arranged properly in different phases then that's going to be the goal state for us that means in any ai problem we are going to kind of have a state space where the, the entire problem is arranged in millions of state space and we are going to navigate in that state space to reach the goal state that is the ai basically ai try to navigate in the state space to reach the goal state the second thing is uh it, it an ai problem can have one or more solutions it is not that you should have only one solution it can have one or more solution for example eight queens arranging eight queens on eight cross eight chess board can have can be done in 92 ways that means 92 solutions are possible for the same eight cross eight chess board it's not a single solution okay in the sense i can i have 92 goal states in my state space i want to reach from starting from any given state i want to reach one of these goal states by traveling through my state space tree that is that is called as the goal state this is an arrangement of a state space i think you can see that this is a nine puzzle problem you can see that you are having a, a grid of numbers starting from 1 to 8 you want to arrange you want to move a, a number at a tile left or right or up or down so so that we want to make this whole grid arranged in a ascending order or 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so you want to make this happen i need to you know have a, a, a tree kind of structure starting from the given state i want to travel traverse through the entire tree to reach that particular goal state so ai problems are heavily dependent on the searching technique remember ai problems are heavily depend on searching technique how fast you search your goal state how fast you search your goal state your problem is efficient okay there are many searching techniques available in the ai a world mainly we make use of a searching technique based on the heuristics okay that is we call it the intelligent guess so intelligence means you know to solve any problem intelligently means we need to make an intelligent guess of the solution right so you you need to build an ai system solution or guess the goal state intelligently okay of course the fourth state is the initial condition you have something called the initial state for all the problem spaces okay where from where because Uh, it is not like you know uh, uh, if you do, if you have improper initial state it is is it, it is possible to solve the problem no you should have a proper initial state for the problem problem that can be taken to the final state then you have something called the goal state as i already mentioned like for example solving a sudoku you have you know the goal state what is the goal state of a sudoku problem you know nine puzzle problem what is the goal state like that and rules okay so a set of rules to solve any problem so put together you know we have five one is the state space second is the object the the path solution path third is the state space and the fourth is the initial state fifth is the goal state and sixth is the operations these six of these six steps will will make an ai problem ready to solve you can think of an exercise like you know i want to make a, a create a problem definition for a you know voice assistants for elderly people to take medicine okay this is one of the problem asked in the last year uh, national hackathon okay so national level hackathon uh, which was conducted online due to corona i was one of the juries in the problem uh, where we asked the people to uh, you know find out the uh, develop the voice assistants for the people to help uh, to help the elderly people to remind about the medicine and about you know monitoring Okay, the geofencing technology you can make use of geofencing technology to monitor the elderly people okay we have some problem of dementia and alzheimer kind of problems okay so these are all some problems we can uh, really look into uh, this is a simple you know such techniques where you know a lot of such techniques are available in ai industry today word inform search and inform search okay and heuristic based search and so on and of course you know uh, uh, i let me tell about this and uh, i'll open it for the questions 
the heuristics you know heuristics is one of the very biggest uh, you know uh, the the poor the, the ele element of ai industry so where uh, by making use of the heuristics it's basically a mathematical uh, function we are going to solve a problem with a lot of optimality there so that we can reduce the cost of searching uh, because once the problem state increases you think of a, a you know autonomous car what would be the search st the, the state space it is going to you know search through for uh, you know arriving to a required conditions or required decisions a lot of heuristics will be applied in solving a problem so heuristics are going to become a kind of you know facilities for us to reach the given goal state in a faster way so uh, most of these the informed suspect is as i told you there are two categories one is called uninformed and is called informed probably those students who are in a computer science background you know like you know breadth first search depth first search these are all techniques which are called as blind search basically we are not going to use any intelligence for such kind of searching where in the case of informed search they are called intelligent search techniques where you are applying heuristics okay to solve a, a, a problem heuristics are going to play an important role so uh, with heuristics we can define lot of operations we can make the controlling of the operations and so on so finally ai can be described as study of techniques for solving exponentially hard problems in polynomial time by exploiting knowledge about problem domain so this is a, a very neat description of ai it can be study of techniques for solving exponentially hard problems in polynomial time you are you are you are, you are supposed to give a solution in polynomial time it should be a p problem you cannot do go, go on uh, you know solving the problem for uh, a longer time than you know it, because suppose you want to take a decision i i would like to quote an example if an autonomous car is uh, make a choice of whether to hit hit a, uh, a young boy or hit a old person uh, this is called as uh, we call this kind of situation as uh, you know um, emotional uh, algorithms that means algorithms were built with some kind of emotions uh, you you may imagine okay you, you can't hit one of the other you have a choice of hitting either one of them is 70 years person or 5 years boy how the car is how the car is going to behave this is called as ethical algorithms so there are a lot of research happens around this kind of thing also ai is more of you know working on solving such kind of uh, situations where in, in polynomial time you want to give a solution okay so some some of the class projects you can think uh, while doing your ai project uh, suggesting the diet for a person a recommendation of a movie you know and uh, a recommendation of a bus timings okay uh, match making uh, tourist services uh, translations any of these kind of projects can be fold into fall into ai and to work with ai there are many solutions software available by different industry uh, most popular is the tensor flow uh, then azure as azure machine learning is toward.ai google ai or uh, ibm watson alexa siri many of these you know platforms are available to you guys to work on ai projects and develop some small you know uh, solutions and most of these companies are uh, hosted their ai uh, capabilities in terms of ai demos also you can visit their uh, websites and see the demos yeah this is uh, from my side i think i took about uh, 35 minutes of talk uh so to just to give you an idea of the remaining question to tell me this that means your brain will apply a function there's no mathematics applied because brain works on experience okay basically the knowledge which is uh, accumulated over by seeing some incidents and by understanding some information available is a brain theory i'm not going to talk about that it's called a quality science basically so brain applies some logic to find out you know how many uh, which route it should take This is a, this part is educated guess basically. Similarly, in uh, AI also, you have a lot of large state space in front of you. Let's assume that you are in some state I. You want to take an you have some ten branches from the state I. You are not aware of which branch you should take to reach the goal in a minimum distance. So right at that point, to reach that state I, I might have traversed from different state. Let's assume that there are, I already traversed ten states to reach the ninth state. I already spent some cost on reaching that state. From that state, I want to go towards my goal state. So I should I should add the cost of reaching the present state plus the cost of for reaching the goal state 
together that is going to be the outcome of my heuristic function so heuristic function should be mathematically defined for a different problem and this is basically uh, an outcome of learning i have i have not talked about you know a uh, lot about learning theory and all this stuff uh, just to say it is a mathematical notion of finding out the cost to reach to the goal state from the given state and whatever the minimum cost okay you are going to get 10 cost because there are 10 branches in that the minimum cost you are going to take it the minimum cost path you are going to try and reach it so i i if you are a computer science student you you can think about this cause algorithm where you are going to find out single source source shortest path to the goal state and all so there is a technique for identifying such a cost okay so probably uh, you need to look into that angle dharani uh, uh the by synchronize i mean there needs to be a transaction involved with the process for the ai system to work our brain is an asynchronized system is there a study involved with simulation of human see sim uh, artificial neural network itself is simulation of human brain okay if we take a deep learning models it is simulation of human brain okay so a uh, lot of these you know uh, models which are available in industry uh, if you if you go into technology aspects of that if you take cnn models auto encoders scans okay all these models you know uh, are influenced by the human brain only the, the theory behind human especially in cognitive science today we are practicing it's all influenced by the human brain so industry is working to build infrastructure ai infrastructure a very complex infrastructure but it is not available to the end devices it's available on the centralized servers whatever the problem you want to pose you should pose it on the centralized server and they will be working back and giving back a solution okay so equivalent to human brain it's a long way to go okay equivalent to human brain a long way to go there were some experiments made by japan and other uh, nations to simulate one second of human brain activity they invested in their infrastructure requirement is too huge for you know simulating human brain uh what is the best ai device i am not getting what is best ai device is refers to which industry because ai device in different industry or different suppose we take ai device in transportation is different healthcare is different okay maybe the question is not very much clear so understood so it's something like big bone rotation okay so so what is neural morphing computing okay i think the this bit of going out, out of my uh, discussion <laughs> uh, no problem think, uh, yeah yeah because no again problem. doctor uh, uh, there is one person yes uh, just a minute so there is one person doctor uh, who is asking is probability an important topic and integral topic for learning ai so definitely probability is an integral topic for learning ai especially in the case of reasoning systems when you are building a reasoning systems it is basically on the probability theory okay the inductive reasoning bayesian networks itself is a probabilistic model uh, decision tree models are uh, using probabilities okay a lot of inferencing the models uh, definitely make use of probability that's why there is also a threat in ai that dealing with uncertain situations Uh, many times this un- dealing with uncertainty request probability models and uh, mainly we you make use of joint probabilities and conditional probabilities uh, for developing inferencing systems understood doctor uh, there is one more question sir how close are we to achieve agi yeah this is too far away from agi no once agi is achieved that there is a lot of threat for human uh, in terms of uh, Uh, you know general intelligence ai system start creating the ai systems okay that's the situation it has happened with facebook uh, you know recently something gone out of their control um, so it's a problem actually agi is uh, still uh, a, a long way to go another uh, world should not achieve that quickly i hope so <laughs> uh, because uh, it may create you know it's not like, like rajani is rajani khan's robo film where a robot is creating another set of robots and uh, all that stuff okay so uh, any 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 artificialness should be under control okay you cannot be give you know a lot of power to the ai and that's it doctor yes sir do you have any more questions so we have questions? one question yes yeah. yes so there's a question while we are studying and researching a lot about ai 
we shouldn't give much freedom for the machine to learn and operate right is that a question okay uh, see uh, if it is a supervised model uh, normally we train the model to an extent uh, where normally what we do in a supervised uh, learning models uh, we, we 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 do we do with the label data uh, we call it the label data learning for a given input what is the output you're expecting like that you pre you prepare some thousands of pages of data for example uh, let's say a cat or dog problem if you take you want to build a ai model to a uh, machine learning model to identify the cat or a dog then you'll be having thousands of pictures of cat and thousands of pictures of dog and you train the model with that so once the model has been sufficiently trained then we go for testing the model normally in ai model what happens uh, we use something called 80 20 rule uh, 80% of the data what we have use it for training another 20% we use it for testing so once the model is ready and uh, we we get into testing mode where we find out the validation errors and we go for error corrections and all so uh, as for the control given to the model we have required to train the model uh, sufficiently otherwise the model would, would behave uh, because it depends on the criticality where ai is applied for example if the ai is applied for uh, a cat or dog differentiation it's not going to be much fatal suppose the ai system is used in the critical situations for example in diagnostics Uh, healthcare just healthcare will use the ai for diagnostic tumors and all if we do not train the model properly sufficiently then there may be chance that ai assistance would be uh, not good to the doctor doctor could take a wrong recommendations and all so it depends upon the application where ai is applied so uh, the, uh, how how much control how much of time you need to train the model and how to make the model perfect okay so otherwise if there is no risk in using that ai you can still take a chance you can train the model with the minimum data and you can allow the model to work without much training so the next question is what are the measures taken to make sure that ai or agi does not break into the free network free internet yeah can you please repeat the question so um Yeah. What are um, the measures taken? Uh -huh. What are the measures taken to make sure that AI or AGI does not break into the free internet? Free internet. What do you really mean by free internet? Uh, what is is meaning of free internet? I didn't get. Uh, and make into free internet. Meanwhile, meanwhile, we get the reply for what is the free internet, doctor. Uh, we'll move to a very very interesting question, and that question is how close are machines to crack human emotional question, like human EQ, and uh -huh. how we can train machines on or uh, and around the EQ model. So, because as of now there are a lot many NLP discoveries are already been done, oh, yeah, like yeah. how Alexa and uh, Siri are working. Talked about humanoids. Humanoids is Sophia is one of the very successful project. humanoid problem where uh, more than 60 70 emotions are built into the machine now it can laugh it can cry it can uh, understand your emotions uh, by looking at your uh, uh, understanding your voice uh, voice timbre and uh, the frequency generated and the words you are using uh, a lot of you know finer level of understanding is happening now voice processing you know uh, emotions are built into the ai now and most of these ai systems where emotions are built especially when you talk about emotion and emotion things these these kind of uh, you know robots are used in treating the 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 children with autism problems okay? they are uh, having the, the attention disorder problems you know so such kind of uh, areas uh, people are experimenting with uh, creating robots uh, for understanding the emotion of a kid to play with a kid uh, on the context changing dynamic change in the context and this is the project with the um, MIT if you visit the MIT labs you will see uh, a nice project of you know robots for autism kids so that very well answered uh, dr satish just sub um, just um, in the interest of time we'll move to one final and last question doctor and um, yeah, okay. and I mean, truly, it was an amazing and insightful session. I hope for all of our audiences. Just one last question, sir. What is your final advice to all the aspiring people here, who are either going to or are already dive into the AI world? And what are your final advice to be the top in the notion, Surya? Yeah. See, uh, my advice would be like this: uh, 
if you want to be really want to become a, a good ai expert start early okay do not wait for 30 year projects to start working on ai project if you want to start if you are uh, uh, maybe uh, i don't know what kind of gathering it is if an engineering or degree and all if it is an engineering program right from first year you should start working on your problem statement so that by the time you reach your finally that thing finally you have a good product of ai with you okay so if you start late okay so you will be just uh, pondering on the surface level of your ai problem so i my advice is start early go deep go into deep and because ai has ai a field has grown you know lots and lot of solutions are available from the industry you you need to experiment with many options if you do not have time you can't experiment with many options you just hang on to one option you are familiar with and you not you'll just miss out something which is very interesting and lot of you know challenges are there so that's why my advice is if you really want to work in ai start early with a product make a good problem statement and come up with a prototype every semester you try to bring up a prototype and make a prototype evolve and so by the time you reach your third year definitely you'll be having good ai product and parallelly you can also publish or go for becoming an entrepreneur uh, because i seen lot of students of you know, our institutes of big command entrepreneurs uh, for you know uh, producing such ideas okay so that is my advice for all of you thank you so much sir so we'll move on for today's Absolutely. challenge uh, as I will we mention uh, uh doctor will will request you to be be here with us for next 10 more minutes and um, okay. we can we can okay, thank okay. you formally and uh, okay. then uh, we may leave sir okay over to you yashasvi thank you so much so as i was mentioning that uh, we'll have a challenge today so the team has designed a 24 hour funniest meme challenge the participants have to make a creative and innovative meme regarding ai for further details refer to our brochure or social media pages or our main website that is the event website also note that your attendance will be marked with the feedback form that will be circulated shortly Keep in mind that the certificates will only be provided after the attendance is marked. Now, to have some fun, we have prepared some quiz for you as mentioned in the beginning. The link is provided in the chat box and the time limit is 30 minutes. The participants with highest scores within a short period of time will be awarded. We wish you all the luck and the links for the quiz go into your chat box now. Meanwhile, everyone attending and busy with the quizzes. Now it's time for vote of thanks for this one particular event to all the stakeholders who made this session happen. I take immense pleasure in delivering the vote of thanks today on behalf of the entire National Summit Volunteers team here. So this event would, wouldn't have been possible without the wonderful cooperation and support from our esteemed speaker for today, Dr. B. Satish Babu. I will request our team panel to kindly share the screen and please present the moment of gratitude to our speaker, Dr. B. Satish Babu. Uh, Akhil, can you please do that? Um, yeah, is it visible? Yeah, please, uh, if you can please share that. Yeah. So, thank you, thank you very much, sir, for graciously accepting our invitation for this wonderful, insightful talk on fundamentals of AI. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that all of our audiences would have gained a lot many insights and this can be their sparking point for starting their journey with AI and on AI. We would like to extend our extreme gratitude to our guide, Dr. Rajeshwari Hegri, who helped us throughout in planning of this 8-day national summit. Our thanks extend to our wonderful media partners, VIT Trends, Innovation Partners, Microsoft Innovation Club, Space Research Partners, SEDS Antariksh, Education Partners, EduTech, fellow coordinators from IEEE BMSCE, and finally, our major host for this national summit, Team Chatted. This event would never have been possible without all of you and our audiences. So thank you to all attendees 
for attending the day one event and hope everyone here must have learned something fruitful today and ready to take their journeys in AI 